Good morning and welcome to the show and thanks for waking up with us today. This morning in the studio I have Lauren Williams from the Panama City Beach Chamber of Commerce and she's here to talk about the Women's Work-Life Symposium. Is that right? Women's it, Work Life Symposium? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, being a woman, often you have to juggle that balance between your work life and your personal life. A lot uh -huh. of women now are working mothers or just stay-at-home mothers, and you try to make that time for just the little things. And mm -hmm. we, the chamber, decided to put on an event, um, hopefully helping to find that balance and uh, level out uh, what women go through. Yeah, we used to call it the work-life balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so easy to overdo one thing or the other. It is. I it mean, is. if you do the home life too much, you, your work may suffer. If you do, you know, your, your profession or your mm -hmm. job too much or spend too much, you know, Definitely. something's got to give. Definitely. So we bring in speakers from all over the country um, giving their advice and their expertise, um, helping women find that balance that they're looking for. And so this event is on the 29th, is next week, right? Friday, May 29th, mm -hmm. that's correct. And where, where will all of this happen? It'll be at FSUPC in the Holly Academic Center. We have the whole entire building wow. all, all day. It's that's from, a great facility too, it is, oh, by the way. right on the water, mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Um, 7.30 a.m., we'll kick off with a networking breakfast. Um, we have a keynote speaker in the morning, at lunch, and in the afternoon. And then uh, to end the, end the day, we'll end with a wine tasting out on the <laughs> terrace. And so this just sounds time. like an all-day thing. <laughs> all-day thing. Uh, you so get, is it? Do you break out into work groups, or is it? Uh, you're in the main a room. Or? You're in the main room for the three keynote speakers, and mm -hmm. then you have a choice between five different breakout speakers this year for a workshop, and you get to choose two, and you go to those breakout workshops. Um, after each keynote. And Does it cost anything? Is there like an admission? Do I have to register? It's $109 uh -huh. and that is a steal for you get a swag bag, breakfast, lunch, all catered by um, Spinnaker. Chef mm -hmm. Conrad Yoakum is fabulous and uh, all those speakers, there's door prizes throughout the entire day. Um, there's an exhibitor showcase. Uh, we, usually we have about 30 exhibitors show up and they can go to each booth. Um, a wine tasting, lots mm -hmm. of fun. Lots so if I wanted to go to this, well, not me, because I'm not a woman, obviously. Oh, we but, have men yeah. registered, too. Do you really? We, we always oh, get wow. a few. Mm -hmm. a women's Work Life and <laughs> Symposium. I think I'll go just to get in touch with my <gasps> feminine side. I don't know. <laughs> but at any rate, if I wanted to go, do I need to uh, uh, register somehow or call or how does all that work? You can or, register at... Or can I pay at the door? You can register at the facility at mm -hmm. FCPC um, day of, or you can register at pcbeach.org or at 235-1159 and we'll get you signed up and paid over the phone. So if I want to find out more about it, I can go to pcb.org. PCBeach.org. Beach. Yes, beach, beach is spelled out, .org. And um, it's under our events. You'll see Women's Symposium. It has all of our speakers, all the forms, everything you need. Now, now who's sponsoring all this? I mean, because someone's got to kind of pony up to get this thing going. Definitely. Emerald Coast Hospice is presenting mm -hmm. this year. Again, they did it as well last year and they're wonderful. Um, a lot of times women are left with caring for sure. um, our parents or our elders and uh, so it's a perfect fit for them to sponsor this event. And show well, isn't that the truth about. too? <laughs> I, I mean, because really women are on the front lines of that whole family thing right. and I don't care how involved a dad or husband you are. Uh, Women have that nurturing manner about them that listen, just makes it. it. I know in my, my house, my wife does all the heavy lifting when it comes, <laughs> to, when it comes to the kids and, oh, and, yeah. and keeping the home fires burning. So I think it's, and particularly when you have elderly parents, yes. I mean, that's, we're getting to an age now where mm -hmm. you may have kids in school and aging parents and you're almost torn in two directions. Oh yeah, I went through yeah. that when I was in high school yeah. and um, I know a lot of people go through that as well and mm -hmm. that's why Emerald Coast Hospice is coming to this event showing what they can do help helping those women out helping families um, mm -hmm. you can also learn all about that we have several other sponsors too too many to name but uh, everyone well, really helps make the yeah. community makes this event such yeah. a success every year we got to run off to the local weather but on okay. the other side of that I want to talk more about what people can expect to take away from this uh, symposium okay. that you guys are having on the 29th at FSU Panama City in the Holly Center. And we'll be right back after you're waking up with Don Weather. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Lauren Williams from the Panama City Beach Chamber of Commerce and also the Women's Work Life Symposium. Yes. That's mm -hmm. gonna be uh, next week on Friday the 29th. 
mm -hmm. at the Holly Center at FSU Panama City. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking before the break and the weather and all that, the Women's Work Life Symposium is something not exclusively for women, but women will come away with some knowledge that may be useful to them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about finding that balance between work and personal life. Mm -hmm. If you're a stay-at-home mom, um, student, uh, professional, it, everything that you can think of is at this symposium and it'll help women just better themselves, empowerment, um, and just you're, you're motivation. Have some interesting speakers there. Definitely. Too. And so anybody that we might know or know um, of? Well, in the morning we kick off with Dale Smith Thomas, and mm -hmm. uh, she is just charismatic. She teaches you to make winning choices in your life, and it's just mm -hmm. really motivational and will kick the morning off perfectly. And then at lunch we have Lisa Rambo, who is actually one of the um, finalists on The Biggest Loser. Lisa Rambo. Yes. Wow. And uh, she's going to talk about her journey and how it's just affected her life and being healthy and uh, just making those right choices yeah. to be how, a better. How to be in command of your life. Ex exactly. How to be a better mm -hmm. mom and just how it's helped her work life as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll do that at lunch. And then to end the day, in the afternoon, we have Joy, the Queen of Clean. It's kind of difficult to say. Queen of Clean. And she's lots of personality. She's actually a comedian. And the thing behind her name, it's clean. It's not keeping your house clean or tidy or anything like that. It's she keeps her comedy shows strictly family friendly, no foul language, nothing. And yeah, so that's kind know, of her. That's kind of a trend now in yeah. comedy. Like the grosser you are, the funny you are somehow. Yeah. And she and, completely yeah. goes against it and is still yeah. hilarious. And she incorporates um, things that happen in her life into the comedy skit. So, still, so. I, so I suppose she probably jokes a lot about women's issues. Absolutely. Yeah. All about women's issues and just how to find the funny and uh, you know the mm -hmm. struggles that you may be going now, through. Now you can have some displays there too or you said earlier. Yes that, we'll have uh, an exhibitor showcase. Exhibitor showcase. Okay. Yes. And what type of exhibits are we going to see there? Um, well we have all of our sponsors mm -hmm. there. Uh, we have shopping available so bring your wallets. Um, mm -hmm. Women are allowed yeah. to shop. <laughs> we'll have money. clothing, jewelry, yeah. all kinds of good stuff. Um, we'll have a lot of health information, mm -hmm. uh, medical information, anything that could be helpful in finding that balance. If for someone women. wanted to be an exhibitor, I mean, could we do that too? If there's a business yes. or something now that's watching us and saying, hey, I want to be part of this, not just only do I want to attend, but I want to do an exhibit there. If how, you how do want we do to that? reach 350 local women in mm -hmm. one area at one time, um, you can definitely be an exhibitor. Uh, you can go to pcbeach.org. We have the exhibitor forms um, mm -hmm. under our events tab, and you can sign up, turn those in anytime. PCBeach.org. Yes. So that's the place to go whether you want to attend, whether you want to be an exhibitor, or if yes. you just want to be a guy or and be a fly on the wall. Exactly. You know, I, I think I'll pass on that. You can back brief me and let me know how it all okay. goes afterwards. How's that sound? <laughs> But we have men actually uh, really enjoy it. They yeah. learn, I mean, a lot of stuff is actually for everyone, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, we focus on women, but sometimes yeah. it can There's some lessons really to be go. learned. Definitely. <laughs> Lauren Williams, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're and thanks welcome. for what you're doing out there. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to getting a good report on what's going on out there for the uh, Women's Life Symposium yes. at the Holly Center on the 29th at uh, FSUPC. Mm -hmm. Thanks well, so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Time to Hack Tuesdays. So yes, I am in my closet and it is a mess. And that reason is, is because I'm getting ready for spring cleaning and today's hack has to do with spring cleaning in your closet. So one hack I wanna show you is how to make space. I share a closet with my fiance and it's not very big. So I need to conserve space. Now I'm getting rid of my winter clothes and I wanna bring in my spring and summer clothes but also make enough room so I can get some new ones. So one hack I want to show you is using an aluminum can tab. It has the holes on the top and bottom. And what you're going to do is you're going to take two articles of clothing. And what I'm going to use is my suit jacket and a white top that I like to wear with it. You're going to take one end, slide it over the hanger, and you're going to hang the other hanger through the hole on the bottom. Now this is allowing you to have two pieces of clothing that are staying together so they're ready for when you're going to wear them but also it's saving the space in your closet hanging them. So this is gonna allow more room in that closet and allow, you know, to be able to keep organized and keep the outfits together. 
So this is one easy way to start your spring cleaning. So for this hack, we are going to be cleaning our tub and shower. And one thing I don't like doing is using harsh chemicals. So a great natural cleaner is using an orange and salt. And the orange is gonna help break down the soap scum and the salt is acting as the scrubbing agent. So now you're not breathing in those harsh chemicals as you're cleaning, but your bathroom is also gonna smell like a Florida orchard. It is great. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna pour a little bit of the salt onto the orange and you're going to use it and rub it against any metal, um, the tub itself, and it's going to break down all that soap scum, make it nice and easy to just rinse off. Very simple and yeah, it's a great way to get your bathroom nice and clean for that spring cleaning. So for this next hack, I want to show you a way to organize your office during your spring cleaning. Now, if you're anything like me, you have a box of cords just hanging around, you toss them in, and when you go to look for that charger that you've been needing, you're tangling it out of this mess. Well, just by using one simple item that you already will have in your house, which is a toilet paper roll, you can make your life so much easier. And all you're gonna do is take your cords, intertwine them back and forth, and slide the toilet paper roll over them, and then you can label them. And then you know that this is a power cord for your TV, your printer, your phone. You will have them all organized and you just place them neatly back in the box so that way you know where they are when you need them. So you just intertwine them back and forth. If you want, you can add a little piece of tape around them. And you're just gonna squeeze them right through the toilet paper roll. Simple as that. This is an easy way to keep your office nice and organized. Another thing that you can do to um, keep your cords you know, in order when they're at your desk, a lot of people have underneath their desk full of ton of cords. They end up running over them with their computer chair. One way that you can prevent this is using binder clips. Binder clips are great for this. All you're gonna do is you're gonna clip them on the edge of your desk and you're going to feed the cords through the metal clasp. Feed it through and you're going to clip it on the edge of your desk. When you're ready to use it, you're just going to plug in your device and when you're done with the cord, the cord will just fall back onto the top of the binder clip rather than falling underneath your desk and being run over by your chair or stomped on by someone. So those are just a few easy tips on how to keep your office nice and clean and hack it easy so that way your spring cleaning is a breeze. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Dr. Stephen Favaloro from Forest Park Animal Hospital. And today we're going to talk about hip dysplasia. Absolutely. Good Welcome to, see to the show, Doc. Thank you very good much. Good to see you, my yes, friend. Sir. How, how are you doing, by the way? I know you injured your shoulder yeah, a while I back. I broke my yeah. shoulder about five weeks ago, but mm -hmm. yeah, getting back, there. Back in, back in action yeah, again. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, okay, not doing any... Uh, no more football. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no more football with the kids. <laughs> no, no, no more clean and jerk. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> All right. So, but yeah. But hip uh, dysplasia in dogs. Absolutely. I mean, it's pretty common, isn't it? Well, it's common in large breed dogs. Mm -hmm. um, we see it in small breed dogs, too, actually, but they don't generally cause much of a problem. Uh -huh. uh, mainly a large breed dog uh, issue, and uh, you know, a lot of people have heard about it, but you know, do they know what it is or what to look for? Yeah, what exactly so, is hip dysplasia? So because you, uh, you hear that term, you do. maybe your dog walks with a little limp or something, right. but what all is physically going on? Can you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> so, so dysplasia means like that it didn't, didn't grow correctly, okay? Yeah. So no, in a normal hip, we have the, the head of the femur, which yeah. uh, it's you know it's the ball which is round sure. connects the femur to the pelvis and it so sits, it's like a ball and socket it is it, so the socket is this cup mm -hmm. called the acetabulum and in a normal dog it really just smoothly glides you've got cartilage that's covering both surfaces and there's just hardly any friction mm -hmm. so with hip dysplasia there's usually a laxity in there there's seem either mal uh, formation of like the cup where the cup is just shallower than normal mm -hmm. or the angle of the neck is abnormal and it's pushing the head um, in a different part of the cup and so what happens is is if you have laxity in there if you have movement the body doesn't like that Mm -hmm. And so what the body will do over time is it wants to stabilize it. But by doing so, you usually end up with arthritis. So um, generally there's two age groups you'll see hip dysplasia. Um, and, and, and most of the time, not always, but most of the time it's, it's genetic. Um, and so generally when they're growing, you know, a lot of people will try to 
overfeed their big dogs, get them bigger and yeah, stronger. Yeah. And, and, and that usually is disastrous because that ends up causing the bones to grow faster, the muscles to grow abnormal. And you can take a dog that actually isn't genetically prone to have hip dysplasia and induce it just by overfeeding and causing the bones to grow abnormal and the muscles to pull abnormally. And people think just, you know, and dogs love to eat. Yes, they do. So you feed them, they'll eat it all. <laughs> they did a study, mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that. They took um, puppies from hip dysplastic prone breeds and they fed one group free feed and another group f just, you know, set a certain amount of meals, same mm -hmm. food. The free fed, Two thirds of those dogs developed hip dysplasia. Oh my. The ones that were fed, um, you know, time feel meals with like certain amount of calories, only a third of those developed hip dysplasia. So, diet and overfeeding has a part to it. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's generally two reasons why you would want to get your dog screened, you know, for hip dysplasia, um, which would require X-rays. And one would be if your dog's obviously uncomfortable, if he's painful. Mm -hmm. uh, the other would be if you think you're going to breed the dog because a lot of times hip dysplasia doesn't really show itself physically as far as making the dog limp and being uncomfortable uh, until they're well into their breeding career. And, so, that, and that's a trait you really don't want to pass along. Well, we try not to, absolutely, mm -hmm. because you don't want to be the owner of a dog who's mm -hmm. very painful, you know, it's upsetting to you, it costs a lot of money, there's surgeries that you might have to do, uh, certainly medical management and pain management. So, um, so when the vet does a physical exam, what he'll, you know, one of the things we'll do is, you know, just pull the hip back, extend it. So dogs with hip dysplasia, they'll be painful on extension. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can elicit that at a pretty early age. You know, I'll have some puppies six, seven months of age, you extend the hip and they'll cry. Wow. And radiographically, you don't really see the hip dysplasia because, you know, they're still growing, but you x-ray them two, three years later and you'll see it. So you really have um, to regulate that growth uh, from the get-go. Well, you do. And, and just because you do that doesn't guarantee that you won't. So, mm -hmm. you know, what we try to do until we can get this DNA marker that determines exactly who's going to throw out hip dysplastic dogs and who isn't, you know, you can get them OFA or what's called PAN-HIP certified. And these are certain um, criteria that uh, dogs have to follow and be approved by radiologists, uh, independent uh, radiologists to say that they have good hips and then if you breed those dogs that have good hips then they're more likely to produce dogs that will have no hip good. dysplasia but still you'll get some that will throw it out and some will some that are not prone to get this can get it Absolutely. due to diet lifestyle type things right and, all and, that and like there there's been some studies where you know you got a uh, German Shepherd German Shepherds are more likely to develop hip dysplasia at an older age if they're overweight uh, than mm -hmm. most other breeds just because of the abnormal ways that they'll start to uh, utilize their joints. Well, just an interesting conversation. Dr. Stephen Favaloro, thanks so much for coming on the show and getting us smart on hip dysplasia. And I guess, you know, just bring your dog to the vet every so often and have them checked out. Annual exam, just like humans? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds like good advice. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And Thank we'll you. be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Joseph Milliron from Bay County Animal Services and his friend Georgia. Welcome back to the show, Joe. Yeah, it's, it's good, good to, see to be you here. Again. Yeah. And, and boy, Georgia licked my hand as we were shaking hands there. <laughs> and Georgia is an interesting looking animal. She's, uh, do you know what breed she is? Uh, well, she's a stray, so we don't know mm -hmm. for sure, but uh, we called her a bulldog mix. Yeah, um, yeah. She's not a purebred, that's for sure. Oh, that's for sure. She's a strange genetic experiment, <laughs> this dog. But a very sweet dog. And she uh, seems kind of husky and kind of low to the ground. She's very stout. Very yeah. stout. That's the word I was searching <laughs> for. Georgia is very stout. Now, she was a stray. She was. Yeah. Uh, one of our officers picked her up after a uh, citizen around out called there. us. Yep. And it looks like, to my uneducated eye, that she's a mom as well, that she's had a litter of puppies somewhere along the way. She certainly mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah, probably not too long ago. Yeah, poor thing. So, so she was just a stray that was running the streets. You brought her on in, and and uh, something that's always kind of um, <clears throat> I've wondered about is who names these dogs? Do they come in with names, or do you, do you get the chance to name them yourself? Or? We name a lot of yeah. them. Um, yeah. No, the other day I went through and named about thirty animals. <laughs> so, oh, really? You just run out of names, or? <laughs> so, I, yeah, Georgia uh, is the end result of that. So, <laughs> so you names. Through, so go through all fifty states eventually. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got well, our Alabamas. A, but if you adopt Georgia, you can call her whatever you like, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And just like all the animals at Bay County Animal Services, you know, she has uh, had all of her shots. 
right? She has a chip if she hasn't already had one. And I suppose even though in, she uh, had puppies, she's probably spayed or will be spayed here soon. She will be spayed mm -hmm. before she leaves our yeah. facility, yeah. Okay, now if somebody wants to adopt Georgia, what do they need to do? They can come on down to the shelter. Uh, mm -hmm. We're on Bayline Drive, that's off of Highway 231. Mm -hmm. There's a $25 adoption fee, and that mm -hmm. covers everything that you just said, the microchip, the shots, uh, yeah. spay or neuter. And, uh, and how old a dog did we say she was? She's about three. About three years old. Judging by yeah. her teeth, yeah. Well, she's just a sweet dog. I mean, she seems very mild-mannered and just very appreciative to be around humans, you know? So, uh, so if you want to adopt Georgia, we can just stop by and, and, and pick her up or take her for, or at least meet her, take mm -hmm. her for a test drive, I suppose, you know, and see if you get along with her. But I can't see anybody not getting along with this little dog. She really is a, a, a sweet animal. And thank you, Joseph, for everything that you do out there to keep our little furry friends safe and off the streets. So please stop by and take a look at Georgia and, and, and go by and meet her, maybe adopt her. And always remember to spay and neuter your pets. We'll see you next time.